to do. We do this every week. Take a moment to release this day to the Lord. Take a moment in spite of what you may have dealt with, what you may have gone through, what you may be going through right now. Take just a moment and breathe. Take a moment and set your focus, your attention, your heart, your mind on him. You know, it's sometimes challenging if we allow it to be, to find time to spend with God, to find time to spend in his presence. But this is your opportunity. Amen. This is your time. Block out everything that's going on around you. If you need to close your eyes, close your eyes. Whatever you need to do. If you need to go to a quiet space, go to a quiet space. But focus your attention for just this moment on the Lord. Okay. And now open up your mouth and say something to him. You may have been wanting to pray all day long and just couldn't find the words or couldn't find the time or whatever the case may be, but you have it right now. Open up your mouth and say something to him. Father, we love you. We bless you. We honor you. We exalt you, Father. We give you glory and praise. We thank you for this opportunity to come together in your presence and to share your word. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name for this opportunity, Lord, to hear from you. We thank you that right now our ears are tuned to your voice. And we give you praise that you know exactly where we are. You know exactly what we're dealing with. You know exactly what's in store for our future. We ask you, Father, to speak a word to every single person that's watching and listening. Speak a life-changing word. Speak a word that will make a difference. Speak a word that will bring healing, that will bring deliverance, that will bring peace, that will bring joy, that will bring victory, that will bring hope. We give you praise right now, Lord, that we'll all leave this time better than the way we came in. We declare it so in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, Veronica. Hey, Veronica. Thank you again for joining us. And now that we're in the room, now that we're coming in the room, take a moment to share with somebody. Take a moment Amen. to invite somebody into this space. We believe that God is going to speak to us. So Amen. you don't want anybody to be left out of that. Preston, good to see you, sir. Hey, Preston. Amen. So, how are you today? I am doing well. Awesome. How are you? I'm wonderful. It's Monday night. It is Monday night. It's time to rock and roll. Yes. So, I'm sure you've already seen the title. We're talking about what it means to be holy tonight. And... I think holiness has gotten a bad rap. I can agree. I think holiness has been twisted and misconstrued and redefined and everything else. Absolutely. Um, I can agree. If I could come up with 30 more words for that, <laughs> I, I would. I may do that later. But I think it's to the point where people have just said, forget it, where holiness mm. is concerned. Yeah. Hello, Shauna. Hey, Shauna. Um, Kiki. Raglan family. Um, it's important that we don't, you know, y'all that have been around, most of y'all have been around us for a while, mm -hmm. and you've heard me say that we need to be careful that we don't get spooky spiritual. Yeah, like over the top. Yes, because... Mm -hmm. You can find yourself redefining terms to make them only apply in a spiritual sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When the Bible was written specifically so that common people could read it and understand it. Mm -hmm. So when we try to get so deep we start drowning, I think it gets dangerous because 
people get damaged along the way. Absolutely. Um, so I want this to be pretty interactive tonight. Um, I, I believe in you all. <laughs> um, so tell me some experiences that you've had or even maybe some instructions that you've been given concerning being holy or concerning holiness. Um, because I can say that I've been around holiness um, for m most of my life. Mm -hmm. But even studying and preparing for this lesson, I saw some things that I hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. And it, that kind of upset me. Mm. Because I, I knew that we had shifted things, but I guess I didn't realize just how much. So, um, first of all, if you will just in the comments, um, tell us, well, number one, is holiness even necessary? Is... Um, yeah. And, and, and you said that really casually, mm -hmm. but I'll be willing to say that the majority of people that consider themselves faithful members of churches mm -hmm. never even consider or think about the word holy or holiness. Well, I think that we need to back up to where you were going the first time Okay, is we need to define it first. So what do we think holiness is? Okay. Well, you tell us. Yeah, just put in the comments just some things that you feel like holiness is or that you thought at one time what holiness is. I think the way Pastor worded it earlier was um, what were some things that were told to you mm -hmm. as it relates to holiness? Um, I will go first. Go for it. I was told very early on mm -hmm. in my walk with Christ. Um, I got saved right at the end of my military career. Um, if you want to call it a military career, because I, I really Don't only did that. one term. But um, it's not like I retired, but... You served. I'm a veteran. That's right. Shout out to the vets. Um, so one of the things that I was told very early on was that I had to stop wearing makeup. And that I needed to not wear pants. Mm -hmm. Now, this was not in a church that I was necessarily attending. But <laughs> there were some other Christians that we were around at mm -hmm. the time. And those were some of the things that they said, you know, they were like, well, you know, you're not, you're not really saved. Because I was really excited, you know, when I first got saved. And I was telling people like, oh, I accepted Jesus. Like, you know, especially people that I knew were already Christians. Uh -huh. I thought, gosh, they're going to be so excited that I finally gave my life to the Lord. Nope. So, <laughs> <laughs> and this particular group of friends was like, you are not saved, friend. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what do you mean? They were like, you wear pants to that church? And I was like, yeah. They were like, nope, that's the wrong kind of church. We need to come to our church. And so it was a bunch of, um, I mean, I never went that route, but it was presented to me that makeup, um, watching TV, drinking sodas, like it was a whole slew of things that didn't make sense to me that they said, you know, if you're really going to be saved, you have to be holy. And these are the things that it takes to be holy. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> I might not make it in. Come on now. <laughs> so, um, and Vivian, okay, so we have one person that is commenting like we asked. Thank you, Vivian. I was, she said, I grew up not being able to wear pants. So you are in the same, you know, along the same line. So you probably heard some of those other things that I heard as well um, because it went beyond the pants thing. Absolutely. And it's it's interesting to me because my holiness journey was interesting mm -hmm. because oh we got somebody else oh it's just a Tia hey a Tia I'm not sure it's necessary I just imagine it's someone who puts God in everything and gives their whole body to God not living with luxuries and only living on the bare minimum 
Okay, interesting. That's an interesting take. And okay. I, I, I'm going to address that too. Yeah. So here's the thing. And I, I'm, I was debating on how to do this. And I, I, I think I decided I'm not going to call out specific churches or oh, specific right. denominations. Yeah. But I'm going to give you a conglomeration of some of the things that I was told very early on in my saved life. Um, that were doctrinal issues for churches that I was around. Hey, Mary. Hi, Sister Mary. What are we commenting? She said, what are we commenting on? <laughs> She's ready to jump in. <laughs> I, I love it. Bring her up to speed. We are talking about holiness. And the question that we asked was, what have you been taught, been told, or what do you believe concerning holiness or what it means to be holy? And... Um, Sister Vivian said that she was, uh, she grew up not being able to wear pants. Uh, Lady Mark said the same thing, um, that when she got, when she got born again, when she got saved, that that was something that was told to her, mm -hmm. uh, not being able to wear pants. Uh, that's what Atia grew up hearing. Atia said she grew up hearing that um, it was somebody that lives without luxuries and only lives on the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. So we were just wanting to get from you guys, what are some of the things that you have heard that holiness is or what do you think holiness is um and we're going to talk about exactly what it means to be holy as opposed to what the narratives are out there mm -hmm. um shauna says awesome. what i think it means living a life pleasing and set apart for god amen absolutely and you've, been gonna, saved, we, you've been saved a long time, Sean. You got the right answers. All of that. What I was told, all the stuff I can't do. <laughs> I, see, I love that too. Yeah, yeah. Now, okay, so let's dig into this. Okay. So I was around uh, at times the people that, hello, Rocia. Good Hi, to see you, man. Hi, um, I was told around, around some of the people that I was around, because I was around several groups, mm -hmm. and everybody had their own little distinctives. Yeah. So some of the people were the no pants, no makeup. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it was, it's interesting because it seemed like everybody's majors were on the women. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, but there was one particular group that focused hard on the men. Mm -hmm. And that group believed that it was a sin for men to have facial hair. Mm -hmm. I've heard um, that one too. You, you had to be clean shaven for the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'll dig into some of that later. I Amen. did not know that. Yeah. Amen. I remember Pastor Smith. Um, good man. He taught having a true relationship with God and giving your life fully to him. Amen. Amen. And we're going to dig into that too. Um, so we had the people that were, you know, saying that, and I'm going to sum up kind of a bunch of these things that holiness mainly had to do with your attire. Yeah. The outer appearance. Absolutely. Yeah. So what you wore, how you wore it, um, was a big part. I heard you mention um, also um, that somebody told you that you shouldn't watch television. Mm -hmm. I heard that too. Um, and makeup. I couldn't wear makeup. I didn't think I was going to make it in to the kingdom. <laughs> with the, and then they said sodas too. Who can make it in? Okay, so now there's, a, there's another church that's out there mm -hmm. that believes that caffeine in any form is a sin. Yeah. Um, so that would do away with your coffee and your soft drinks uh, for the most part. No cappuccino, Shauna. She has one every morning. <laughs> that's my sister. Um, so a lot of these people, let me give some other examples too. Um, there are some groups that believe that it's a sin for a man to cut his hair. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so, wait, you can't shave with one group, mm -hmm. and then you have to shave with the Absolutely. other group. Absolutely. Okay. 
Um, there's a, there's there are people, there are groups out there. Yes, ma'am. So I've is. heard it, Sister Mary. <laughs> um, there are groups out there that preached for years that it was a sin to ha- not just watch but to even own a television. Mm-hmm. I heard um, that. One group in particular that I was around at times called it the television. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. They. That same group also, and now this is this is old, this is very dated, and I would have to believe they're not saying the same thing today, but they also believe that it was a sin to have a telephone. They called it the, the telephone. Yeah. And now here's the thing. The, the, the reason, because I haven't given any reasons for any of these yet, okay. but I have to give this one because it's so funny to me. Mm-hmm. The reason they gave for it being wrong to have a telephone is because people use the telephone to gossip. Oh, okay. Now... Here's the thing. Any and everything that you can come up with can be used for the right reason or the wrong reason. Mm-hmm. So to cancel something out because somebody used it improperly right. is absolute foolishness. Mm-hmm. But it's easier than teaching people the right way. Mm-hmm. So if you see somebody watching the wrong things on television, Mm -hmm. instead of helping them understand what they should watch, just say, get rid of the television, now you don't have to deal with that anymore. Mm -hmm. The problem is, with all of this, if you... (laughs) That's absolutely right, Sean. (laughs) You can gossip in person, okay? (laughs) They might want you to get rid of your mouth, too. Uh, Yes, (laughs) absolute absolute foolishness. foolishness. Now, we can also get on some groups that consider holiness. Um, yeah, absolutely. Preston. That's true, Preston. That was a good one. I've heard that one. Playing sports. I even saw Listen. some mm-hmm. I even saw some that would have church on all the nights that people would normally play like football and things like that. They presented it. As giving us, yeah, cancel culture is real and it's not new. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they presented it as giving people an alternative to having to participate in those things. But mm-hmm. are you really going to tell wow. a child that here are your options? No Friday. You can go night to the football, football game or you come to church. <laughs> no Friday night football. No, no Friday night football. No. <laughs> um, so even though you since you brought that up, mm-hmm. there are some that believe holiness is tied to when we worship. Mm. So if you don't worship on a certain day, then you're not holy. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, we could spend the, the full hour tonight mm-hmm. talking about all the things that people have said. And there are a, a lot more, mm-hmm. I promise you. Mm-hmm. That some of you probably have never heard of, and it's it's a good thing. But the idea is not that we spend this time making a list of all the things that may or may not be holy. Mm-hmm. The idea is for us to, for us to understand what holiness is, mm-hmm. because I can guarantee you, like I'm stepping into your room right now, that every single one of you have at one time or another in your life debated about whether or not to do something because you wanted to know whether or not it was sin or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's a problem because we've taught holiness incorrectly. Mm-hmm. So because we've taught it incorrectly, people have those kinds of questions. Right. Those are questions that believers should never have to deal with. Mm. But because we've been taught to follow rules... That's good. We've been given a list, and that list is Mm ever-changing. So we never are really sure what's good and what's not. And maybe it was good yesterday, but it's bad today. And it might be good again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So everything we want to do, we're either running, trying to check a list, or trying to ask somebody. Mm -hmm. Or we just start eliminating so many things from our lives that there's nothing left. Yeah. Now, let me tell you a couple of things that holiness is not. Okay. Holiness 
is not what it takes to please God. Mm. Okay. We are not holy. We do not live holy. We do not practice holiness in order to please God. Right. Now, I just... Somebody just heard the needle scratch on the record. You messing people up with that now. You got to explain. Well, I don't have to explain. The Bible needs to explain. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. That's good. Not holiness. That's right. So it's your faith that makes you pleasing to God. Mm. Now, somebody will say, well, I I just, I want to be holy so I can go to heaven. No, that's salvation. (laughs) That... (laughs) (laughs) So you just do it and wait for the lightning. Okay. Only Veronica. <laughs> absolutely. I love it. And some people live like right. that. Right. Some you people li- you absolutely live like that. Live like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but holiness is not your salvation. Right. But again, some mm-hmm. people teach it that way. Yeah. So you spend your life living like an Old Testament Christian. Mm-hmm. Because that was the thing. Exactly, Sister Mary. At, at our best. At our best. That's good. That was the th- see the thing that the Old Testament saints had a hard time understanding mm-hmm. was God did not give them commandments and laws because He wanted them to follow them. Now let me stop right there. I want you to hear what I just said. I want you to let it soak in, and I want you to get this. God did not give laws and commandments to the Old Testament saints. Because he wanted them to follow them or live by them. Mm-hmm. Now, I just threw everybody. That wasn't just a needle scratch. That was taking the record off the player and breaking it. <laughs> Why did God give the commandments and the laws? I'm glad you asked. God gave the commandments and the laws because he wanted them to see just how inadequate they were on their own without him. Mm-hmm. The reason they spent all those thousands of years trying to live by commandments and laws is because they were stubborn Mm. and stiff-necked. Because instead of them saying, oh oh my goodness, I can't do this on my own. Mm -hmm. God, I really need you. And drawing nearer to him, Mm -hmm. they made it their business to do everything they could to follow rules. They were so serious about it, they actually created more rules and added them to what God said and said, not only do you have to follow the rules that God said, but you need to follow these two. But that's what churches do today. Absolutely. There are some churches, not all churches, but there are some churches that will make additional things that you have to do, things you have to do for the pastor, things you have to do for the first lady, things you have to do for the ministry that have nothing to do with the word. Well, I'm glad you said that. Because the bottom line is, all of the stuff that we listed before, Mm -hmm. very few people even tried to give scripture to back up those things. (laughs) Hey, Quita. Hello, Quita. Uh, Yes, you came in on time. Right on time. You did. Very few of them would give scriptural evidence or scriptural reasoning Mm -hmm. for the laws and the rules that they were commanding you to follow right right it was just this is the way we do things Mm -hmm. now the ones that did try to give scriptures those scripture references were very thin Mm -hmm. or uh, very tainted and twisted Mm -hmm. so and uh, to point fingers that's right sister mary so here's the thing and my again i I brought up my holiness experience because my holiness experience i think was i mean everybody's experience is unique but i think mine Uh, was exactly what I needed Mm -hmm. because most of you know I grew up in a traditional Baptist church and I got saved in that traditional Baptist church. Mm -hmm. So let me make this clear. Had I done nothing else, I was on my way to heaven. Mm -hmm. That's something else that some people have gotten twisted because we've, I won't say we've, some people have presented salvation plus Mm -hmm. 
mm. in order to get you into heaven. Okay. Out of context scripture is one of the most dangerous things that exists in the world today. Yes. Because you can literally make the Bible say anything you want it to say mm-hmm. if you want to. Mm-hmm. That's why it's important that whenever you listen to preaching and teaching, that you have your own Bible and that you follow along and that you do not accept anything that does not come out of scripture in context. Mm-hmm. People can pull random parts of scriptures and say, this says this, and this means this. Yeah. If they can't back that up. Mm-hmm. This is what one of my old pastors used to say. If I say something and you can't make sense out of it right now, it doesn't register in your spirit right now, mm-hmm. this is what I need you to do. I want you to put it in a can and sit it on the shelf. That's especially true when it comes to people um, giving personal prophecies. Mm. Personal prophecy, and I, I'm helping somebody tonight. Mm-hmm. We're going here because we had to go here. Mm-hmm. Personal prophecies are never should never be news to you. Mm-hmm. If somebody is, and then the sad thing is, what we call personal prophecy, what we call prophecy, is really word of knowledge. Right, right. Um, but when, when the prophet comes to town and starts... Speaking cars and marriages and everything else into people's lives, and we fill up tents because you know the prophet is is prophesying good stuff. Mm-hmm. If the prophet says something to you that you've never heard before, put it in a can and sit it on the shelf. Mm-hmm. Prophecy should come to confirm mm-hmm. what God has already spoken to you. Mm-hmm. Prophecy does not come to bring new information. Right. So now, what, what my pastor used to say was, put it in a can, sit it on the shelf. Every now and then, take the can down and shake it. <laughs> Did it do anything this time? Okay, if not, put it back on the shelf. It, sometimes we'll get a word from God that's for tomorrow. That's right. Sometimes we'll get a word that's for next year. Mm-hmm. If we try to apply it right now, it might blow up. Mm-hmm. We have to understand not only the wisdom of God, but the timing of God. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't just readily receive everything. Yes. Um, and it's so dangerous because people trust the man and woman of God. So when and they things should. are yeah, and when things are spoken, um, sometimes as believers, we may not necessarily know what's God and what's you. You know. Mm-hmm. So when things are coming out, you can't just Receive everything. Yeah. You you have to, you are responsible for your growth. You're yes. responsible for your spiritual walk. And even though you have people that speak in authority, you still need, to, you're still responsible for knowing the word for yourself. Yes. So if it's something you don't understand, something that you've never heard before, even if it's teaching, you all know that we're, we're a Bible teaching ministry. Um, there's not Absolutely. a lot of, you know, Fluff, not a lot of hooping, not a lot of all of that going on. We are focused on the word. I'm working but on it. If we, <laughs> he is not working on it. But if even we teach you something and it's something that you're unfamiliar with, it is your responsibility to study that out. Don't just Absolutely. take our word for it. You get in the word and find out what God has to say to you concerning that thing. Absolutely. 100%. And that's not the first time that you've heard this if you've been yeah, around we've us said any that multiple times. Time. Absolutely. Um, So, when we get words from God, or when we get instructions from church, Mm -hmm. our job is to find out what it means. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not telling you to go to your church and question everything that's going on. Right. (laughs) I'm working on it, Sean. I'm just going to bust out on it one day for (laughs) y'all. Yes, we are responsible for knowing the word. Yeah. I'm not telling you go to your church and question everything that's going on and, and start pointing out things. What I am saying is that the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Mm-hmm. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. Mm-hmm. So we have to get understanding and not just follow blindly. Mm-hmm. Now, let's get into some Bible since we're talking about Bible because we want you to understand what holiness is and what it's not. Okay. So we have a scripture um, that's about to be on the screen. And it is Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44. And it reads this way. 
for I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Let me read that one more time. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, what I wanted you to see in this particular verse of Scripture, first of all, God commands us to be holy. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, he says that he's holy. So God is not asking us to do anything that he's not already doing himself. Right. But the other thing I want you to see from this particular scripture, and this is consistent throughout the Bible, God never asks, requests, or require that we live holy. Mm, that's the difference. God didn't call us to live a holy life. Right. Again, I heard the needle scratch on the mm -hmm. record. You're messing them up. God did not. And see, this is what people have told you. So now you're trying to check things off of a list and try to make sure that you're doing all the stuff that's right so you can live holy. The Bible does not tell us to live holy. The Bible tells us to be holy. There's a difference. And now somebody just say he's playing with words. Mm -hmm. No, I'm being very serious. And if you don't understand the difference, you're going to have problems. If you are just living holy, it means you can stop living holy. It mm -hmm. means it's something that you're making a decision to do, but it's not who you are. Right. When you become holy, that's who you are. So I am a man. I can't tomorrow say, well, I don't know if I want to be a man or not. I am a man. I don't care what 2022 has to say. Okay. I am a man. That's who I am. Mm -hmm. Now, how I act can either match up with right. who I am or it can deviate from who I am. But my actions don't determine who I am. That's right. So here's the thing. Here's the issue. We have decided that actions are what determines holiness. Mm. That's good. What I'm saying to you is that actions are only a byproduct of the heart. Hmm. So if you don't get your heart right, all you're doing is performing holiness. Right. So we teach people, we get people in churches, and we create actors. Wow. We want you to perform this way so it makes our church look good. Mm -hmm. But they didn't perform that way. In the Bible, it doesn't matter. This is the way we perform at this church. Mm -hmm. So this is the way I need you. This is the costume I need you to wear. This is the... The role I need for you to play, it doesn't matter that it's not who you are, not but really. this is the way we want you to act. So now you please us. Mm. Now, if you leave that church, it doesn't matter how you act or how you acted, you no longer please them. Wow. Because they're going to talk about you. They're going to criticize you. They're going to send you to hell and everything else. Not because you started acting differently, but because you left them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, we decided. So here's the thing. Here's the difference that we need to understand. God didn't say, um, I do holy things. Mm -hmm. God said, I am holy. I am holy, yeah. And he didn't say, you should do holy things. He said, ye shall be holy. Mm -hmm. He said, and the reason I know that you can be holy is because I am holy. Mm-hmm. So if we can understand that we're supposed to be like him, mm -hmm. then we don't have to try to live up to what somebody has put in front of us. Amen. Because my goal is not to reach your standard. My goal is to be like him. That's right. And the standard is who I am, not what I do. Not what I do. Amen. This is so good. I thank God I no longer live under those standards. <laughs> Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's it. So, let's keep going. Well, before we, before we leave this verse, put this verse back on the screen for me right quick. Yes, sir. It says, for I am the Lord your God, ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves. I can't leave this without defining some of these words. That word sanctify is a very close relative of the word holy. Mm -hmm. Both of those words mean to be set apart 
or to be dedicated. Now, what that means is, oh, let me say this. And this is one of the things that bothered me when I was studying this out. Because, especially in the Old Testament, the majority of the time that you see the word holy, it's referring to things and not people. Mm. Okay. There was much more of an emphasis for things to be holy mm -hmm. than for people to be holy in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. God said what he needed to say. He didn't need to keep saying it. But there was always an issue about somebody using something in the wrong way. Somebody um, touching something that they, didn't, they weren't qualified to touch mm -hmm. because that thing was holy. Was holy. Mm -hmm. um, somebody eating something that they weren't qualified to eat because that, that food was holy. Mm -hmm. um, it's important that we understand that God did not create us for things. He created things for us. Hmm. Okay. Be not act. Absolutely. That is so good, Sister Mary. Actions change by Action being just. Yeah, that's right. Abs that, being that's the change. entire thing that we're saying right now. Um, if we understand who we are, mm -hmm. we don't have to spend as much time trying to figure out what to do. Right. But if we don't know who we are, then all of our time is going to be spent trying to figure out what to do. Yeah. So. This verse says, sanctify yourself, set yourselves apart. So let me see if I can, let me, let me make this make sense to you because I don't want to be spooky spiritual. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk so high that it doesn't make sense at your level. Every single one of us understands sanctification completely. Even if you've never been to church, you understand sanctification. Mm -hmm. Okay. We grew up with sanctification. Even if you never went in church a day in your life. All right. And let me help you understand this. When I grew up, I had certain clothes <laughs> that I could not go outside and play in. I had church clothes that were for dress up time. Mm -hmm. If I went to church and came home from church, I didn't stay out in the yard and play football in my suit. Mm. You go in the house and you take those clothes off and put on some play clothes right. if you want to go outside and play. Mm -hmm. All that was was sanctification. Those clothes were set aside for church. Mm, that's a good analogy. My other clothes were set aside for other things. Mm -hmm. The same way, now things have changed to in 2022. Mm -hmm. But by the same standard, I wouldn't wear my play clothes to church, although people do now. Mm -hmm. But because those clothes were set aside for play. Mm -hmm. So those clothes, there, there wasn't a time that I said, oh, let me mix and match my play clothes and my church clothes. <laughs> and you know your parents are watching. They would not have Absolutely. that. Absolutely. <laughs> so I was being taught sanctification from as far back as I can remember. Right. And the Bible wasn't even necessary. Hmm. So it. if you understand what if you understand what I just said, then you don't have a problem with sanctification. You have a problem with what people are asking you to do for sanctification. Hmm. Okay. So absolutely, definitely don't play in the church shoes, <laughs> right? Or even the school shoes, really. School shoes, yeah. School clothes yeah, school and school clothes shoes were separate. And play too. clothes were separate. Yeah. Okay, so it says sanctify yourself, set yourselves apart. So here's where we get into the in, where we get into trouble. Because of scriptures like this have been twisted to mean something else. So it says sanctify yourselves. What that really says is make a difference. Mm. Or establish the difference. Yeah. So and sanctify yourselves and ye shall be holy. Mm -hmm. So does this possibly mean that if you don't sanctify yourself, you can't be holy? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, uh, so we're studying. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to be holy, part of the requirement of being holy is to set to yourself sanctify apart. Sanctify yourself. To be different. Now, does that mean that you have to grow a beard or shave a beard off? No. Didn't say that in the scripture. Mm -mm. Does that mean you need to put on makeup or take makeup off? No. Didn't say that in the scripture. 
Does it mean you have to put on pants or put on a skirt? Didn't say that in the scripture. It said sanctify yourself. It mm-hmm. said be different. Mm-hmm. So now, the problem is who defines different? Hmm. We'll come back to that. Sanctify yourselves and you shall be holy for I am the Lord. Now, the, the second half of this verse doesn't make sense in this context. Hmm. Because it says, neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. What is he talking about? If you don't read the verses that come before it, then you absolutely will not understand read what this is talking context, about. Right. This is talking about eating and not eating certain things. Mm-hmm. So again, the holiness that was being dealt with here had to do with the laws concerning their diet. Mm-hmm. So in order to set themselves apart or be different, he established a, a meal plan for them mm-hmm. and said, these are the things that you can eat. These are the things that you cannot eat. Now, the question that the church always has in modern times is why? <laughs> and why is fine. I remember years ago hearing people say, don't question God. You're not supposed yeah. to question God. If you don't question somebody, you're going to be ignorant. He never said to not ask. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. He tells us to ask. Yeah. Constantly. Um, why, for all of the laws, all throughout the book of Leviticus especially, um, there are all kinds of um, dietary laws and societal laws and different things like that um, that were very much so health-based. Um, even going so far as telling them how to wash, it was centuries before, <clears throat> before a lot of the rules, even as far as washing were concerned, were understood by the secular world. Mm-hmm. And science today backs up what was said thousands of years ago in the Old Testament as far as the Bible stressing the need to wash in running water. Mm-hmm. The way people washed during that time outside of this was in still water. Mm-hmm. So they'd get a pot or a vessel of water and they'd wash that way. Mm-hmm. But there's something that adds to the cleaning power if the water is running and mm-hmm. not just not just soaking in filth. Mm-hmm. So um, that's what that verse is talking about. Let's go to another one. It pretty much doesn't matter which one. That one's fine. Um, and actually, this one follows up what we just read. First um, Peter 1.16 says, Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Where is it written? Where we just read in Leviticus. In Leviticus. That's why I put this one here, because I started to just use this one, but I wanted you to see that it really is written, and you can find it. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go to the next one. Ezekiel, chapter 44, chapter 44 verse 23 says, and they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. Now, there's so much in this verse, but I want to point out one word first. Oh gosh, I can't just do one. Okay, every word in this verse is, is, is special to me. Um, the first word I want to point out is difference, the difference. And we mentioned this earlier. There should be a difference between holy and unholy or holy and profane. Um, sometimes we can blur lines and not um, act like we don't understand that there should be differences. Um, but there is a difference between what is clean and what is unclean. Mm-hmm. And it says, they shall teach my people the difference between holy and, and profane and cause them, this is the other word I want you to get, cause them to discern mm. between the unclean and the clean. Yeah. It's not enough for somebody to just teach you what to do and what not to do. Right. If you don't progress to the point where you can discern, mm-hmm. then the teaching is invalid. Right. But so many times we only want to take the first half of this verse. Mm-hmm. So you have to constantly come back to me to find out, can I do this? Can I not do Mm -hmm. this? I give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down. That's foolishness. Or like Veronica said, you just, 
<laughs> Do it and wait for the lightning. Yeah, no. We're not going to live like that. If we understand that my job as a pastor, our job as teachers is to build you to the point where you don't need us. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 you understand what I mean when I say that. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to be able to not only reach God for yourself, mm-hmm. but you need to be able to make decisions for yourself. You need to be able to discern for yourself Mm -hmm. without having to always get instruction from somebody else, without always having to get guidance from somebody else. Um, They shall teach my people the difference between holy and profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. Again, God is looking for, I won't even say that, God requires holiness. He does. But holiness has to come from the inside out Mm -hmm. to be the holiness that God is calling for. We have more scripture. Going back to Leviticus. Leviticus 10.10. And that ye may put difference between holy and unholy and between unclean and clean. Again, establishing the difference. Now, how do I determine what's holy and what's unholy? How do I determine what's unclean and what's clean? Well, first of all, if you don't know, if you're unsure, first place to go is scripture. What does the Bible have to say about this thing? Most of the time, that can be the end of the conversation. Mm-hmm. What does the Bible what have to say about say? it? What does the word say? And then I act based on what the word says. Mm-hmm. Not hard. Mm-hmm. So if I'm trying to decide whether or not it's okay for me to murder somebody, what does the Bible say? Thou shalt not kill. Mm-hmm. Now people have twisted and confused that scripture because I've heard people try to completely negate the Bible because of that one verse, thou shalt not kill. Mm. Because they say, well, the Bible said thou shalt not kill, but what about all these wars in the Bible mm-hmm. and people killing people? That word kill there is to mean means to take life without a cause. Mm. It's literally murder. Mm-hmm. So um, try something else. Um, but if we just look at what the Bible has to say about whatever the thing is that we're trying to figure out whether or not we should do, the majority of the time, we can stop right there because the Bible has something to say concerning, um, if you're wondering, should I marry this unsaved man or this unsaved woman? But I love he. (laughs) What does the Bible say? The Bible says do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the Bible says a lot more concerning marriage. But if you don't understand that marriage is more than just how you feel about somebody, right. then you'll find, well, that's why the overwhelming majority of marriages today end in divorce. Mm. Because people get married based on a feeling. Mm-hmm. People get married based on, I like her, I like him. He's cute, she's cute. And that's all you know. You don't know anything about that person's heart. Don't yeah. know anything about that person's spirit. You just know how how they make you feel at the moment. Right. And the thing is, they make you feel good at the moment, and then two moments later, you hate them. Mm -hmm. So, um, Sister Mary said, if we worship in spirit and in truth, your spirit must be holy, not the flesh and actions. Now, okay, let's deal with that, since you brought that up. Because something else that I noticed in, especially Old Testament, the majority of the time that the word holiness was used, it was directly connected to worship. Mm. Uh, The Bible several times talked about us um, worshiping in the beauty of holiness. Um, Again, there aren't a lot of times when the Bible talks about people specifically being holy, especially the Old Testament. Um, It talked about holy garments, Mm -hmm. talked about, uh, you know, holy... Um, 
dishes and things in the temple and different things like that. Mm -hmm. Talked about holy land. Mm. Talked about um, you know holy furniture. I mean, literally, all, a holy mountain. All these kinds of things. Um, and it was so the people understood um, when it came to God stuff how to see a difference. Mm -hmm. Because again, you're, you're, you're dealing with Old Testament times. You're dealing with people that are not living with Holy Spirit inside of them. Right, back then. Right. The, the, you were dealing with people that the Spirit would come on them for them to do work, and then the Spirit would lift. Yeah. So why is that important? Because today, when you get born again, the Spirit of God comes to live on the inside of you, and it's and his job is to build your character. Yeah. His job is to display his fruit. Mm -hmm. So Galatians 5, 22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. If those things are operating in your life, you're going to win. Right. You're going to be successful and you won't have to even be concerned about whether this thing that I'm getting ready to do is, is holy or not holy. Mm -hmm. Because if the fruit of the spirit is operating in you, that fruit is not going to allow you to just go in the wrong direction. Right. That fruit is not going to allow you to just do treat somebody bad or do something or something, all this kind of stuff. That that's 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 beneath you. Mm -hmm. The problem comes. Again, what Sister Mary said, the problem comes is when we allow the flesh to get involved. Mm -hmm. So um, when we, I think it's Romans chapter, Romans chapter 8 verse 1, this won't be on the screen. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, that's Romans 8, 1 and 2. Here's the thing. When we understand what's working or who's working in us, then actions become a secondary thing. Mm -hmm. If I understand that the Spirit of God is working inside of me, I allow Him to lead me. Right. So I go in the right direction. Mm -hmm. If I understand that, you know, we've had times when I don't want to hear nothing about the Spirit. I don't want to be led by no Spirit. Right. I got something in my mind that I want to do. I need to tell somebody off. I need to let somebody know how I feel <laughs> or whatever the case may be. Right. Um, you know, some people will say, I'm going to lay my religion down. <laughs> right. You know, as if you can go pick it back up when you right. finish doing pick whatever you're doing. Pick it back up doing. when I'm done. But that's the problem with religion. We can put it on and take it off. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about religion. We're talking that's about right. being holy. That's right. And see, here's the thing. You can't take off who you are. Right. Um, so here's the thing. If you want to walk in this kind of life, it has to come from within instead of learned behavior. That's right. Because here's the thing. You know, early in my walk with God, um, I was around a, a, a group of saints um, that I learned ministry from. Mm -hmm. And something that was fascinating to me during that time, we were very young, and um, learning at a much faster pace than we probably should have been. But Something that, that fascinated me was, and I, I got around these people because of music ministry. Mm -hmm. So there was a choir, a community choir, and you know people from all over the place were part of the choir. And 
there was one person that was one of the most faithful people in the group. Um, never, never heard a, a harsh word come out of her mouth. Um, never treated anybody bad that I saw. Again, we were teenagers mm -hmm. at the time. Um, you know, always positive, always encouraging, always, you know, whatever else. And I found out after quite some time being around that ministry that this particular person wasn't even saved. Hmm. Had not given her life to the Lord. She was a good person. Mm -hmm. But being a good person is not enough. Right. And I had the opportunity to be there when she did get saved. Thanks so, um, you know, that was a blessing because yeah. I, I just think we all just assumed that she was that saved she was. because she acted saved. Mm -hmm. She acted like us. Well, she acted like what people thought you should exactly. be when you're a Christian. Exactly. And the thing is, you can follow all the rules that somebody can come up with and still go to hell. Mm. You know, I, I, I said that nicer than the way we used to say it. You know, you can, you can follow all the rules and bust hell wide open. Mm -hmm. If you don't do the inside part. That's right. If all you have is a costume, mm. you can play a role and you can fool almost everybody. But the costume has to come off. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thinking about a costume, because one of the things that I saw dealing with holiness, especially in the Old Testament, was there was a lot of talk about holy garments. Mm -hmm. You know, the priests, the Levites, had certain clothes that they had to wear when they were going to minister. Right. There was their holy garments. And they couldn't just, they couldn't wear just anything when they were going to to, to do ministry, and they weren't just wearing those clothes just for anything. Right. Um, but there was a situation that happened in the, in, in the Old Testament regarding um, some holy garments. And it was Moses got married. And the people around Moses, the people closest to Moses, didn't like his wife. Mm -hmm. And they had some some negative things to say about his wife. Mm -hmm. Two of the people in particular were Miriam, his sister, and Aaron, mm -hmm. his first assistant. Mm -hmm. um, and they talked negatively about Moses' wife, and immediately Miriam was stricken with leprosy. Mm -hmm. Leprosy was a disease that caused your skin to turn white. That uh, Now, here, this was the issue that, that they had with Moses' wife. Moses married a black woman. Mm -hmm. And they had a problem with her being black. So God said, okay, fine. You got a problem with black? I'm going to turn you all the way white. That's what mm -hmm. happened to Miriam. She got leprosy. Skin turned completely white. Mm -hmm. Not white like people white. Like so White like white. crayon white. Yeah. <laughs> So Moses had to pray for her so she could be healed of the leprosy. That all happened in, in a few moments. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened to Aaron. They were both talking about his wife. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened to Aaron. That story bothered me. <laughs> well, why did, it, why did it get her but not him? Well, you had to keep reading. Mm -hmm. Years later, mm -hmm. I found out what happened, and what happened was Aaron was wearing his priestly garments mm -hmm. when he was keeping up foolishness. Mm -hmm. The priestly garments protected him, covered him, so he didn't get the judgment that Miriam got. Mm -hmm. At the time. At the time. Now, here's why this is important. We all wear a garment today as believers. Mm -hmm. Not a physical garment. Um, but here's the thing. That garment that he was wearing back in the Old Testament times was a foreshadowing of grace. Mm. What is grace? 
Grace is not a license to sin. Mm -hmm. Grace is an opportunity for you to get it right. So he had an opportunity to repent, to get it right. Mm -hmm. He chose not to. Mm. So years later, when he took off the priestly garment, he fell dead. Mm -hmm. Immediately. Miriam got sick. Moses was able to pray for her and she got healed. Mm -hmm. He toyed with the covering that God had on his life. And the moment the covering was lifted, mm. he died. He lost his life. Mm. That's why it's important that we don't play with grace. See, this is the other side of this holiness argument. And this is the reason why people teach holiness so harshly. Mm -hmm. because it's much easier to give you a list of thou shalt nots mm -hmm. than to teach you how to be able to discern for yourself. Right. It's much easier for me to, to be able to keep some kind of control if I could just get everybody to follow a list of rules than it is for me to say God is, is able to speak to each and every person and they can learn to hear his voice for themselves yeah. and you can walk out holiness on your own without having to have a list to go by and check off things because there are people that are checking off right acts mm -hmm. and still have a wrong heart mm. and that is not pleasing to God although it is pleasing to people right people will be tickled pink to see somebody that has a bad heart but that hides it with good actions mm -hmm. but they're doing good things absolutely outwardly yeah um, so just be careful of that. Um, we have more scripture. Let's go to them. First Thessalonians 4, 7 says, For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. So again, we're establishing a difference. We're mm -hmm. seeing that holiness is a contrast to an alternative life. Than a life that is not pleasing to God. That's the same one. I think we have one more, maybe two. Okay. And yes, let us let us go to Ephesians chapter four and verse twenty-four. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now when you get born again, I said that the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. Mm -hmm. He indwells us. And the Bible says that we become a new creature or a new creation. Mm -hmm. So when we understand that we're not just changing. Um, hey, Agnes. Hey, Agnes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. When we understand that getting saved, getting born again, is not just you. I, I used to hear people say, you know, I, I understand what they meant. But I heard people say, you know, when I, get, when I got saved, I didn't stop dancing. I just changed partners. <laughs> I get it. That's cute. Yeah. But if you think salvation is just you changing your actions, mm -hmm. then we're in trouble. Right. Because, again, all of this has to be. The heart first, and then what's in the heart. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Mm -hmm. So if we get the heart right, and the first step to getting the heart right is understanding that you can't do it by yourself. So if we allow God to come in, change the heart. When we are lost, when we're not born again, the Bible says that we're dead in trespasses and sins. Mm -hmm. Now, you're walking around, you're talking, you're doing things, but the Bible calls you dead. Mm. What that means is not that your physical body is dead, right. but your spirit in you That's is right. dead. Mm -hmm. Your spirit died when Adam ate the fruit back mm -hmm. in the garden. Mm -hmm. So the same way that Adam died when he ate the fruit, but he was still walking around, that's what we inherited from him. Mm. It's called the sin nature. So when you are not born again, when you're not saved, you have 
the sin nature. What that means is your spirit is dead and your soul is in control. Mm -hmm. right. Your soul, remember your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your soul is in control. So you do the things that feel good, that sound good, that look good, all that kind of stuff. Right. Not understanding the, 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 the damage that's being caused. But when you get born again, God brings your spirit to life, mm -hmm. revives your spirit. So now your spirit can take its rightful place mm -hmm. and be in control of your life. Now, here's the problem. When you get born again, Holy Spirit comes to live inside of your re regenerated human spirit. Now, here's the issue. Your spirit is like a newborn baby when you, get, when you first get born again. Yeah. Your soul has been running the show for years and decades, yeah. depending on how old you are when you get saved. So now all of a sudden you have a, a baby spirit that's trying to tell a grown soul what to do. Mm. It doesn't always go well. Mm -mm. So this, my friends, is why churches come up with a bunch of rules and say, hey, follow these rules because you don't know what to do. Yeah, to try to force you on track. Absolutely. Here's the thing, though. We can give you rules all day long. But again, we're looking for more than just actions. We're looking for a heart change. So here's what has to take place. And it looks like we may have to do part two. I'm trying to finish this. Um, here's what has to take place. You have to feed your spirit the word of God to build your spirit up. So now your spirit can speak. Your spirit can command with authority. And your soul has to listen. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. You feed your spirit, you starve your soul. How do you do that? You feed your spirit by reading the word, by spending time in prayer, by worship, by spending time in the presence of God. Those things build up your spirit. Well, how do you starve your soul? Every time you do those things and you obey God, mm -hmm. you're actually taking strength away from your soul because the soul wants to do the wrong things. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible talks about, uh, it's Paul that talks about, um, he had a war within his members, mm -hmm. you know, the spirit warring against the soul, trying to figure out who's going to have control. The, the holiness battle is not a battle of what outfit I need to put on or um, whether or not I should do this certain thing. The holiness battle is who's in control of your life, the spirit or the soul. Mm. Because if you are spirit-driven, spirit-led, mm. then holiness is going to come natural to you. Mm -hmm. If you are fleshly-led and driven, that means the soul is in control, then you may be able to fake some acts every now and then or even have some learned behavior that lines up with somebody's church doctrine. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it's not who you are. Right. So it never really sticks. Uh, is this the last scripture that we have? It is. Okay. Go ahead and put that one on the screen. I love this scripture. And we can close here. Um, Hebrews 12, 14 says, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Now, if we understand Hebrews chapter 12, mm -hmm. if we understand that God has a desire for us to walk like him, to be like him, which is holy. Then we'll understand that every request or every command that God gives is for our good. Right. So when he says follow peace. It's not always easy to follow peace mm -mm. because peace is fine when people want to be peaceful. Right. But when people want to act a fool and, and, you know, cause all kind of ruckus in your life. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not hard always easy. to follow peace. Mm -hmm. But if we understand, so we need to put some things on, on automatic, you know, we need to talk about money. We're going to do that. We have to do that soon. And I'm going to give you a tip. One of the things that I recommend dealing with finances is to put as many things as you can, as far as your bills are concerned, on auto pay. Mm. Right. Because a lot of people lose money 
paying late charges and all those kinds of That's things right. because you knew you were supposed to pay it, but you forgot and something else came up and you all that kind of stuff. You pay it anyway. Just pay it on time. Make it automatic. Even your savings should be on auto pay. Mm -hmm. You should pay yourself automatically because it's easy to forget to save. Mm -hmm. But if you have it automatically done, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen whether you think about it or not. Right. That's the way things should be when it comes to us obeying God. If I go into a situation understanding that my job is to follow peace, if I go into a situation understanding that I have a covenant of peace, then even if the thought comes up to respond the way somebody's dealing with me, mm -hmm. I'm reminded of my covenant. I'm right. reminded of my responsibility for peace. It says, follow peace with all men. That means no matter what they're doing, how they're treating you, your job is to follow peace and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. If you want to see God, you got to be holy. Right. Now, again, the Bible tells us that in the end, that every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess right. that Jesus is Lord. So that means the saved and the lost are going to see him. That's right. So what is the scripture talking about? It says without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Mm -hmm. But then we know that everybody's going to see him in judgment. Mm -hmm. So now, remember talking about the kingdom of God, how the Bible talked about how um, that you had to, to walk a certain way and do certain things in order to, to see the kingdom of God. It deals with perception. It deals with how we see not with our physical eyes, mm -hmm. but how we understand something. So it's not talking about in the end, in judgment, you're going to see God. Right. But the goal is for you to see and understand God in his ways every day. Right now. Mm -hmm. So holiness allows you to see God in the middle of your situation. Mm -hmm. Holiness allows you to understand and experience God's way, even when it doesn't make sense. Right. So let me say this and, and we're going to end. The goal, the thing that we're shooting for, is to be like him, to Amen. be holy. Amen. And the way to get there is to allow him to do the work. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. There are people that name the name of Christ that fill up churches, that preach sermons, that sing great songs and all these kinds of things that don't even think about holiness. Right. So why do I need to put a focus or an emphasis or an importance on holiness? It's not about what everybody else is doing. Absolutely. But here's the thing. God inhabits holy places. Mm -hmm. Even when they built the temple, even before the temple, when they had the tabernacle, there was the outer court, there mm -hmm. was the inner court, there was the most holy place. The only place that God went in the tabernacle or the temple was the most holy place. God didn't hang out in the outer court. Right. God didn't hang out in the inner court. Mm -hmm. God goes to holy places. That's why the Bible tells us that your body is the temple of the living God. Your body needs to be holy because you want God to abide there. You want God to be there. So here's the thing. The more places that you can establish holiness, mm -hmm. the more places you can experience God. We've talked about this before. A lot of people learn how to do church, mm. so they don't need God to participate. Hmm. It's So just because you see somebody preaching a sermon or singing a song and, and people getting excited, it doesn't have anything necessarily to do with God. Right. God wants to show up in the midst of holiness because he wants to be with people like him. Right. So holiness is not so you can reach some level in some organization. Holiness is so you can be with him. Amen. So our time is way up. Thank y'all for spending an extra 15 minutes with us tonight. We love you. 
We appreciate you. Hey, mom and dad. Hey, mom and dad. I hope this at least sparks a conversation in your life to consider holiness and not the performances that people have tried to put on you, but a heart toward God Amen. that makes your decisions for you, a heart that keeps you from going in the wrong direction or doing the wrong things. Not a rule, but a heart. Amen. Do you have anything else on your mind? I do not. I think we've talked enough. <laughs> so until next time. We, we love, love you to life. life. Good night, Good night. everybody.